Oh my God. Can you believe it's the last week of the Sandbox Studio? Just yesterday, it seems like seven years ago, if that makes sense, <laughs> that Jack from Atlantis was out here and we were breaking ground on the very first Sandbox Studio back in uh, the beginning of January there. So I'd love to say we saved the best for last, but what I'm taking away from this so much is that there definitely isn't a best, there isn't a better, there isn't a preferred style. What I love so much about it is how unique every design has been up to this point and I knew these guys were gonna bring their full abilities, their full imagination to create such unbelievable backyard water features and spaces, right? Really that whole lifestyle. And so we have Chris Suing from Nature's Recreations out here, and I know his design is over the top. He sent it to me a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and even I was kind of doing this. What are you talking about? But it's gonna be crazy. It is probably gonna be our most challenging one, which means for you guys, it's gonna be the most dramatic for sure. If I turn around here, you can already see Chris and <laughs> Chris and Chris working together. They've started placing some of these larger fake boulders that we actually got from Stuart from Universal Rock sent these in we've got some five foot some four foot uh, we've got some more big boulders and i know what he wants to do with these they are fake rocks like i can literally push that over with my hand so we're going to do a lot of stuff to do change the color of these change the integrity of them get them to be a little bit more structurally sound but rather than me explain it let me go over here introduce you to chris suing from nature's recreations and what his design is all about hey chris good morning oh, Doing, buddy. Huh? Ready? Last one. Ready? Are you are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You are. <laughs> so I see you guys talking a little bit about the design and trying to figure out some of the logistical stuff. Yeah. And I say I think we might use the word logistical about a hundred times on this project, right? <laughs> like, but what I was telling everybody is with that, they're gonna see something at the end like they've never seen before. Yeah. You want to kind of walk them through the design? Sure. Let me into your two-dimensional world and then we'll kind of pan back. So first explain, give me a reference point on your drawing. Of, of the house because that's a view that the viewers are so accustomed to seeing. Show me the deck and then explain to me what's going on. The deck is here. This is the planter that we're uh, taking out now, but this is house side. This is man cave she shed side. Yep. So essentially my goal was to create two different spaces here and subdivide this backyard space with a faux mountain range, completely blocking the view from the pondless side and the pond side, except for a small little viewing window with these steps that will lead up and over through the mountain pass. We're going to have a lower sunken patio here, a set of steps that'll get us down into that, another set of steps that'll get us out, a negative edge fall about two and a half feet with some seating areas around a fire pit, water all along the deck, another crossing to a bench, and then that leads you up and over the pass to wow. the on the side. Yep. Water running along the whole front, deep pooling area with our tall mountain berm. We're going to have some killer waterfalls coming down this to face this sitting area and this viewing opportunity off the front of the man cave. That's awesome. So a couple things that I see that are really sticking out to me that maybe our viewers don't know are some of these stepper pathways. These indicate some elevation changes and that's probably one of the most unique things. So we're talking about elevation changes and I think you and Chris can kind of play off each other, you know, with the steps coming down and like some of the challenges, but also why it's so important to, to have those things to help achieve the goal. Well, I think, I think what Chris is doing here is, and really what all of the artists of the year all have in common is trying to take a flat space and create elevation. And when you can create elevation in really kind of a smaller backyard, it makes this place feel like you're in a different world. So Chris wanting to come down right here, about two, two and a half feet, mm -hmm. and then come back up five feet over there, you're literally gonna feel like you're in like a sunken grotto. cave grotto type feel with all this big stonework and evergreens and back on top. This is gonna be a very, very intimate place. And we use the words like intimate and, and cozy yeah. and and relaxing and a lot of that's achieved by the way you create these different elevations in a backyard. If this was all flat, kept it flat, first I think you're not using your imagination to your fullest ability, but it's just gonna have a different feeling. And so much of what Chris does, what we do, what the other artists of the year look for is not just the aesthetics, but the feeling you have when you walk through a space. So not just this space, it's also gonna be when you come back out of this space, he wants to keep this area Stay with him, at Chris. about there you two go. feet to 30 inches wide, like almost an uncomfortable type feel to come through here. 
but when you walk through it, as the tree branches kind of brush up against you a little bit, as you kind of navigate through here, it's gonna have more of this surprise element when you get to the other side. Which is another word, surprise, relaxing, cozy. <laughs> An intimate feeling that I equate to all my clients when I'm designing something is, if you've ever been out in the middle of an open field versus standing underneath the canopy of big trees or like a patio in the blazing sun versus one that has a canopy. You just feel like you're closed in and it gives you that sense of intimacy or privacy and it really makes it feel more personal and I would say comfortable. Yep. You know, so the goal with this is to make multiple rooms in really a small space, but what's gonna happen is this space is gonna look way bigger than it really is after all said. A hundred percent. Yeah, we've said that a lot too. Like I love your analogy, like a big giant open field and what you feel like, but then you put a giant oak tree in the middle of that big giant field, everybody congregates around that tree. And it's not just because you're fair skin and everything. <laughs> There's a feeling underneath that tree, right? That's where you picnic, that's where it just, it happens. Yeah. And so you're definitely gonna have one of the more challenging designs, but the reward at the end of challenging is always worth it. Mm -hmm. And so I think we have a lot to do. I don't know how far you guys got into the whole design of this space, but I think for the viewers out there, instead of us showing them everything, let's just go for the ride together and we'll explain <laughs> as we're going, right? Look at it now, really, really pay attention to what's here now. I think we should do a really slow kind of panoramic type thing, show everybody what it looks like now, yeah. and then how this is gonna like so drastically change over the next couple days. And we have four days to do it all. Yeah. And this might be the only point in the booth, kind of roughly where I'm saying, where you can see almost everything, right? So that's a great segue, Brian. I'll start with you. <laughs> Good, so, all right, I guess we're gonna get right into it. And we've got a little bit of demolition that needs to happen. Somebody had to decide to tear our, it up. Our flower box wasn't flowery enough, so <laughs> let's put rock there instead. Let's do it. <laughs> So first order of business to get this site ready is going to be to remove this existing planter box that we built. So we are detaching it from the house and we're gonna try and get this thing out in one piece if possible. So wish us luck. something we used to do at home shows all the time. We used to use pallets for a couple of reasons. One, to displace weight. So when you had an enormous amount of weight, so if you're building up a six foot high waterfall and you couldn't have all of that weight on the floor because it was over a covered parking garage or something, we'd come in and we'd put these pallets, wrap them with fabric, and then just top dress them with soil. This actually fills an enormous amount of soil. We would have had to bring in soil, I think, if we wanted to build this all up five to six feet. So this fills up a big giant gap. We would never do this outside. It wouldn't be stable, the stuff would rot and fall apart. But for here, for something that needs to last a week, the pallets is a quick, easy way to get our height and still make it stably strong. Six, bro. Yeah. Six. Well, come on. 